Are there blind spots for blood-based biological age clocks? For example, Levine's test includes glucose, two biomarkers of liver function, a biomarker of kidney function, two biomarkers of red blood cell related uh, markers, the MCV and RDW, uh, markers of immune cells and inflammation, including white blood cells, uh, the lymph lymphocyte percentage, which is lymphocytes divided by total white blood cells, and then as a marker of inflammation, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Similarly, aging.ai uh, contains glucose, two markers of liver function, five markers of kidney function, five red blood cell related measures, uh, two immune related uh, uh, biomarkers, including total protein, since albumin is already included, and knowing that total protein equals albumin plus globulins, the total protein measurement in aging.ai is likely a reflection more of globulins, uh, but also platelets. And then uh, the lipid panel, including total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides, which are generally used as measures of, uh, to evaluate cardiovascular disease risk. So note that biomarkers for all organ systems using these two measures, Levine's test and aging.ai, are not included. So with the goal of a more comprehensive representation of organ and or systemic health, what other biomarkers can we include? So with that in mind, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at data from this recent preprint. And in that study, they identified systolic blood pressure uh, and uh, lung function as potential contributors or contributors to the prediction of chronological age. And as we'll see in a minute, systolic blood pressure may also be a biomarker of brain age. So what were the top predictors of chronological age in this paper? Starting with the data in women, we can see that the top two predictors of chronological age were systolic blood pressure and the forced expiratory volume in one second, or the FEV1. So what is the FEV1? So it's a measure of lung function and it's defined as how much air can be forcefully expired in one second. Now note that blood pressure and the FEV1 contributed more to the, to the prediction of chronological age relative to other blood-based biomarkers, including two markers of kidney function, urea and cystatin C, HbA1c, glycated hemoglobin, and alkaline phosphatase, which is found on Levine's test. So what about the data in men? So once again, the top biomarker for its uh, contribution to the prediction of chronological age was systolic blood pressure. And although it wasn't number two, it, uh, the FEV1 came in third place for its contribution in terms of weight for the prediction of chronological age. And note that these two biomarkers, again, the systolic blood pressure and the FEV1, contributed more to the prediction of chronological age relative to other blood-based biomarkers, including uh, markers of kidney function, again, cystatin C and urea. So blood pressure's impact on CVD-related outcomes may be obvious, but it also may impact brain age. And that was shown in this paper, optimal blood pressure keeps our brains younger. Now, there weren't any pretty pictures in the paper, but we can see that people who had an optimal BP, which was identified in this study as a systolic blood pressure, SBP, less than 115, and a diastolic blood pressure, DBP, less than 75. So those people had a significantly lower brain age, and this was identified with MRI, so brain scans, when compared with people who did not have uh, blood pressure uh, less than 115 over 75. So let's put this data into perspective by looking at how blood pressure changes during aging. So for the systolic blood pressure, we can see that there are relatively low values in youth with data for men in green and women in blue. And then it consistently increases during aging such, such that uh, 90 year olds or older than 90 have systolic blood pressure, average systolic blood pressure measurements that are higher than 130. What about the diastolic blood pressure? And that's what we can see here. So in youth, relatively low, it peaks in middle age, and then it declines during aging such that uh, older than 90 have also relatively low levels. So when considering both the SBP and the DBP, we can see that youth, blood pressure in youth, is characterized by values in the 108 to 118 over 65 to 67 range, depending on if you're a man or a woman. And in aged, blood pressure, average blood pressure readings would be somewhere in the 130 to 135 over 68 to 69. And I, I say age, but this is advanced age, so older than 90 years old. Now, note that BP is a relatively easy measurement and it can be performed at home, which is kind of an advantage over the blood-based biomarker test where you've got to actually go somewhere to have it drawn. So what about the FEV? How does that change during aging? Let's put that data into perspective. So the uh, FEV, the forced expiratory volume in one second, it declines during aging in both men and women. And note that there are four lines here for both men and women, including healthy non-smokers, healthy smokers, people who are sick, which was defined as having the common cold or lung disease. So sick and non-smoker or sick and smoker. So regardless of the health status, we can see that the, or lung function, FEV1, peaks in youth somewhere around 20 years, and then it consistently declines for both men and women. 
Now, when, when considering the F FEV1's importance as a chronological age predictor, can we slow or prevent the age-related decline? Now, to improve or slow the, slow, the, slow the decline, tracking would be a first step. So how can we track it? So the FEV1 is measured with a spirometer or a spirometer, depending on how you pronounce it. And I'm not sponsored by that company. Uh, I was looking, there are many spirometers and some of them are very expensive. This is actually a relatively affordable one. And I was looking for spirometers that have been used in published studies. And actually this one has. And use of the spirometer was compared against spirometry performed at the doctor's office. And there was a, an almost perfectly linear correlation between at-home spirometry with that performed at the doctor's office, so a correlation of 0 0.96. So uh, I, I haven't purchased a spirometer yet. If anyone's currently using one or has used one, uh, please indicate it in the comments. So uh, I'm curious in terms of what everybody's using. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.